So um, yesterday's talk, we focused on the Questro image contest. The whole beginning lecture part went on Questro. And then we did the hands-on practices. Whatever presentation you saw today is because of that practice. Today, I'll be focusing not on the image contest or the understanding of those multi wavelength images, but I will focus on how to extract not the known knowledge, but something unknown to the community to find basically new sources. So that kind of activity that where public, just the beginners, can start contributing to real research. It's called citizen science research, crowdsourcing, etc. Public participation in research, various names are there. So it is not the standard research that a guide teaches very detailed or very um, very advanced stuff to the student and then student contribute to the finding something new. Solving a new equation or finding a new thing that scientists are considering important. It is a way a different kind of research always. I will give you an old example. Suppose you find a very old uh, bone on the way and you feel that this is not a very modern 10, 20 year old bone but this, you feel like this may be hundreds of years old. And then you go to the history department in your nearby university and you tell them this is a bone I have found and this looks like very old, not normal bone, it doesn't look like white, it looks brown. And that person is an expert, he can say yes, it is, doesn't look like 100, 200 year old bone, it may be even older than that. And he goes to another person, they do a carbon dating and they find out this is a 5000 year old bone, 5000 year old bone. When the professor will write a research paper on history, archaeology, he has to acknowledge you because you found it. Right? That is what was your accidental finding. That was your serendipitous discovery of a 5000 year old bone. What the modern day thing is happening is a you can design that serendipitous discovery now. By how? Say for example satellite archaeology. Our satellites are taking photograph of our earth, our India, and you find some part of the India that one doesn't have grass. There is no grass growing. And that part looks like a rectangle. It's very likely that just below that no grass rectangle, there is actually a hidden wall just below the soil. So if you keep on searching for that kind of pattern, you are actually doing a research. You have been empowered by the power of the satellite imagery. So there are now machines which is producing so much of data that the professional astronomers, professional scientists, professional archaeologists are not sufficiently large in number. They require help from the public because the technology has improved so much that the data creation capacity has increased orders of magnitude high. The number of PhD degree holder scientists is not increasing that way. If you increase them that way, then probably they will look for all astronomy job. Why I want a faculty position in the astronomy department? There will be a job problem there. So that is how actually there is another way scientists have thought of that instead of me doing everything, let me involve the public by the basic training through internet, wherever you are interested in the topic, you can learn, you can join, you can help me discover more. This kind of thing, what earlier people used to call amateur level activity, that you are amateur interested in history, you discovered a bone. You are amateur, you are interested in variable stars, you discovered a variable star with your tiny backyard telescope, one inch, four inch like this. They were called amateur. But currently, this kind of trend has increased so much that it is actually prevalent in dozens of fields now. You take an MRI scan of somebody's brain, hospital is making, and you give the data in the internet. People will be trained how to spot a cancer affected part of their brain. And that person is identified immediately with the help of public. So this mode of astronomy, this mode of astronomy actually has started some, something around 2007. John Hopkins University, Oxford University, they started called Juniverse, okay, Galaxy Zoo project. And the project now has close to 2 million people, not just in astronomy, 
not classifying just which is spiral and which is elliptical galaxy, but they are in almost all kind of branches where data is digitized. They can discover planet, they discover ionized gas bubble, they can discover unusual galaxies. I will tell you the story, Greenpeace galaxies or Hennie's object, that kind of thing, that nobody knew that kind of object existed before. Many new things are serendipitous discoveries that discovering the unknown is actually the best thing that one can do. Why? I know I cannot fly an aeroplane, but I don't know what are the other things that I don't know. That is the superset always. I don't know what I don't know. So public, without any prejudices, participating in the data analysis or data pattern recognition skill where the data amount is huge that professional scientists cannot handle is a new age way of participating for public in the research process. This way not only research is getting benefited, you are also getting benefited by learning those subjects. And the whole society is getting benefited in two ways. One way, it is connecting you to science so that your scientific attitude improves. That helps the society become better in all aspects. Second, you actually have paid for all this research, right, taxpayers' money. Suppose I, am, I don't have time, I don't have expertise, I don't have skill to make best use of the data that the telescope is making. It is actually underutilization of your money, poor performance of the system. So what I cannot handle, if I say that I am given up, public can join in now. So if public can solve the problem, then you are actually making best use of your money. Right? So that way, there are many benefits of continuing a citizen science program. It helps your education. It bypasses many of the constraints that your local college or university is having. Because you are now connected to a research which is of a, from a world class machine. The guide is not in front of you because you are participating through the internet only. For example, like I don't have a single student who is doing PhD with me in CBS where I'm working, but I have 150 students who have been trained for seven days. I roam around all over different research institute and train them. So they are with me in, through the internet. I have trained in one day this kind of programs. This is just a couple of hour program, but one day full day program I have trained close to 1000 people. They are my student. How they are helping? Sitting there at their home, through their mobile phone, they are participating. So I'm kind of extracting a little bit of energy from all of them, trying to grow my own career. Right? Very selfish. Anyway, so let, me, let us start the, looking at my slide now. So this is called Citizen Science Research Workshop. Citizen Science Research, I already described what is that. Being part of a large data searching program from a large telescope so that the quality of your education as well as research participation, however small it may be, it is actually significant and important. You may be participating in a small part, but it is important part. Discover black holes with GMRT and Red at Home. GMRT you may have heard already. GMRT is like a SCAR pathfinder. SCAR session we are sitting here, we should be knowing all. So it's a small SCAR in some sense you can say. Whatever experience we have, whatever we will be learning how to do science discoveries with GMRT, we will be able to do even better than that with the SCAR. So we should be prepared for SCAR. So we will discover black hole in the sense, why? Only black hole? There are many other kind of research GMRT does. But black hole thing is very prominently seen in the sky survey, all sky survey that GMRT has done. GMRT has not done all sky survey in various other modes of research. It has done a all sky survey in 150 megahertz, 2 meter wavelength radio waves, and it has done in a particular way of looking at the whole sky. GMRT can look at in 1400 megahertz, 16 megahertz, and in spectroscopy mode of 21 centimeter H1 line, that kind of sky survey has not been done. So the data is not available in the survey mode for citizen science. But it can be done with GMRT if we focus on that part of, re part of research. So whatever expertise I have, I can teach you only that part. If somebody, some H1 experts wants to start a citizen science program, sir, supernova person start a citizen science program, they can start another citizen science program with a different approach, different topic, different science interest. So my science interest because of the TGSS survey is black hole 
galaxy co-evolution. How black hole and galaxies co-evolve hand to hand with each other. How each other affect each other's growth and destruction. So Radatome is the name of the program that I, the citizen science collaboratory that I have started six, six years back. Real astronomy discovery sitting at home anywhere in India using GMRT. That's how basic is the purpose. And you need only Gmail and Facebook. You do not need any other resources. Your laptop or desktop, which will have DS9 like thing and web browser that is sufficient for you to participate in this program. So the, all the 150 students that I have trained, I said, in India map, you can find their locations. You know already the location of astronomy research institutes, right? Aris Nanital, PRL, TFR, Ayuka, NCRA, IIA, to uh, some extent SINP here. So but think, uh, yeah. I did not plot Astronomy Institute here. No, 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 I, was just I said SINP. Huh. So that way, the most of the research facilities in astronomy are, you can say, mostly confined to the western part, isn't it? So to listen to an astronomer, you cannot travel 3,000 kilometer, 2,000 kilometer, and go to him. Some way, the Astronomy Institute can create a resources that wherever you are, you can participate in learning from that talk learning from that exercise, learning from gaining that skill training. So the process has to be nationwide process, selection, whoever is interested can come. That's what I do. What I do, I go to HRI, I go to Institute of Physics, I go to Aeroplanetum Delhi, I go to um, CBS, ICTS Bangalore, wherever I go, I select people from their Facebook interaction with me and to give them the seven days training. After the training, they go back to their home and from their home, they, on every Thursday and every Saturday, they come and I come online, live chat with them. So whatever they will find at home, they will post in a Facebook group and they will discuss those new found objects with me. And that is how we grow, which are the important objects that may have found. Once they find those important objects, we will approach to GMRT. Then we want to further investigate this in deeper observation, more sensitive observation, different frequency, different way of investigating them. That is how we have got over 50 hours of observing time with GMRT and all these people whose objects is going to be part of that proposal, they become co-investigator. They become researchers in that GMRT proposal which goes through international review and then we get time to observe with them. That's how all these various institutes are supporting this citizen science training program. One day, ISER, IIT, one day program or as I said, HRI, IOP, Institute, I say, ICTS, I said, the seven days program. Food, stay, everything is becoming free there. That's how you get trading. So all these institutes are supporting this citizen science initiative since last six years. These pictures are there because this kind, these two objects discovery made me famous and they became my identity. Discovering a exotic galaxy called Speca and this picture you must have seen your SCAR posters in the session. So this is NGC 3801, NASA news, NASA JPL, uh, Caltech press release as well as Time magazine article. So this is how, how the radio outflow from the center, the green part, affect the star formation of the whole galaxy. That was the topic. So how the galaxy, this galaxy creating this lobe and what is their evolution history? This was the important result, both of them are. That's how this kind of important news making discovery, I am trained, I am capable of doing. So I will be able to give that kind of training to all the people who are inter interacting with me. So we will be making small discoveries with TGSS data, we'll make it big with GMRT observation, and we'll make best use of our own telescope. Right? So that way, this is just has become the icon of black hole. I'm not part of this research, this event horizon telescope. So I'm a UGC faculty, UGC MHRD faculty in University of Mumbai, Department of Atomic Energy, Center for Excellence in Basic Science, very long. I have to take in one breath. So that way, so Red Atom team, here Jaydeep was here yesterday, but Supriya Dubey who was helping you, the brown t-shirt, he will be helping you after this talk also, so that we learn how to discover something. When you go back from here today, you should be able to communicate with me through the Facebook post and through chat that what you have found is actually important or not, you ask me. If, you, if I find it important, you become a 
discoverer of that object. If you can find out that what is interesting there, what is important there, I have to give you a credit. Ultimately, unless you say that this bone is older than the normal bone, then you don't deserve the credit. If you come to me with a bone and say, sir, I found a bone. It's a bone. You don't get credit for discovering that 5,000 euro. You have to realize first that what is unusual there. So the moment you find something unusual or what I tell you to find, what structure or what color I tell you to find, once you can say something more than the normal, that's how you start getting the credit for that discovery. I found a leaf on the way. I discovered a leaf. Unless that leaf doesn't look green but blue, it is not interesting, right? So you have to find something which is important that you can communicate this is something important. Then we will verify that. So that way, in Vigyan Samagam, Mumbai I started this. Vigyan Samagam, Bangalore also I did. I am doing here also. Let's go. So um, I kind of give some kind of self-introduction that I have already started. We will focus on multi-wavelength astronomy. I told you yesterday that I cannot be being an orthopedic person. I cannot be saying that I don't want to look at your x-ray image because I want to see only visual picture of you in treating you. It's a very upsided, very obsolete way of looking at the problem. You have to be able to look at the same problem for, from as many angles as possible, as many wavelengths as possible to get a complete understanding of that process. You cannot say I don't want, I don't like MRI, I don't want ultrasound, I don't want x-ray, I want only visual picture of the patient. I cannot be a good doctor. So that is why multi wavelength approach is necessary. Today you may be interested in 30 meter telescope. You like the star constellation optical. But tomorrow you get a PhD fellowship, JRF position in radio astronomy. You will quit? No. Today you are interested in, sky, in uh, radio astronomy. Tomorrow you don't get radio astronomy institute, but get in optical astronomy. You will quit? No. You join the optical astronomy institute and then finish the PhD degree and you come back to radio astronomy or whatever you like. Today we are building one telescope. By, by the time you finish five years or seven years in your research, you want to come back, the telescope may be a little old. So you have to be prepared. This is a new, new necessity actually in the career. You cannot be narrowed. You can start your research very early, but you cannot be narrow in your interest field until somebody assures you, for example, a job. Okay, so we can have a multi wavelength approach now, and the scientific topic is black hole galaxy coevolution how the star galaxy and the black hole is interacting in some sense. They interact by radiation, they interact by a plasma outflow from the black hole accretion process. You can look at the star in the galaxy in optical, you can look at the ionized gas in the optical, you can look at the cold molecular gas from which star form in submillimeter radio, you can look at the atomic hydrogen in radio. So various, various inter wavelengths actually interact with each other when you understand, we try to understand this black hole and galaxy co interaction. Why citizen science for a big nation? I already told you. Just because we are a big country, we have our own problem because of the size, because of the number. Five IITs are not enough. Seven ISRs are not enough. We are Savaso Karod Janta, right? So, to address that kind of issues also, you need to have a different approach. What I say that the US appro approach to scientific progress doesn't help India. For example, they have a world class facility for very large array. And every year you can find a radio astronomy PhD from India going to America. And since last 20 years, a uh, politically incorrect statement, since last 20 years, no white-skinned people has come and stayed in India as a postdoc full-time. Why? They know GMRT is powerful. They know GMRT is best in its own way, in its frequency range, in its sensitivity, in its resolution. They come and use every year. Since last 20 years, probably there is no other machine in India which is attracting foreign scientists every year regularly for 20 years. They want to use GMRT. They publish dozen nature and science paper. 
But nobody wants to stay. Is our science fault? No. It is our socio-economic issue. Right? So that's why every Indian being all educated, they go to solve science issues in USA. They don't come because of not science reason, because of non-scientific reason. That way we have to solve our own problem then. So this is what is your alternate process that I am thinking of. There may not be very large number of PhD degree holder rest number, why cannot be there large number of student? There is no other country which has this competitive as India has. Largest number of science and engineering educated young people communicating to each other in English and connected to internet. China may be having the number, but English is the problem. So that time will, will not long for, last forever. They will learn English. So since 20 years we are leading with GMRT and we are not able to make that kind of nature and science publication discovery like thing. The reason we need more PhD degree holder is not coming that takes five years to finish a PhD. So we need that kind of strategic thinking to be able to solve the problems that the big nation like our faces. And citizen science may be the way that with the help of this competitive edge and internet and GMRT's data, we probably will be able to address some of the issue. This is only in astronomy. Suppose we have facility in biology. As I said, citizen science works in all branches possible. Suppose we have facility in biology and citizen science starts in biology, environmental science. Now, a lot of people will be able to do their research sitting in their own colleges and departments. So, conclusion, this problem this problem of big nation and the big data problem that the machines are going to create in future, it's probably, if you can think wisely in a smart way, we can convert that big problem to a big prospect for a big nation like ours. Can we actually do it? That is why so many institutions are helping me. It's a good, good innovative idea that he is converting the large amount of data that the GMRT has created in the survey mode into a education, training and research system through the internet. This is what man machine combination machine and the manpower that has been combined now to create some new way of solving the issues. Okay, let's go. This is what I say that who am I? My name is not enough. My work is my identity, right? This is the first part of my identity. Each I am a discoverer of the farthest star, discoverer of this, uh, the exotic black hole system, discover the black hole galaxy coevolution that made news. So it's important. So I can do this kind of thing. These various institutions gave press release on this, so this is considered important. Fine, very good. So the second part of my identity. I know how to analyze data from GMT, big thing. I know how to talk to people so that 150 people, 1000 people are attracted. Right? That's our skill again. And I know this is my skill because so many institutions are supporting it. That is an innovative idea basically, socio-scientific experimental idea. ICTS has hosted this camp. They, uh, whatever proposal we submitted for this kind of a camp, it goes through a review program and they fund it, they support it. Everything is free. Wonderful food, forget about the science. So it's a nicer again, one day program. One day program, more than 100 people can be accommodated. They'll get the basic RGB training, basic way of looking at the data from GMRT. Then they can go back home and start doing. So the seven day trained people will be guiding this one day trained people. We are creating a kind of hierarchy there. This in Vigyan Samagam Bombay, people were trained for just two hour, sorry, two, three hour. So what we do, we, I teach from home mobile communication through Facebook chat and somebody sitting in, in his home, his or our home, learning the same thing. In e-class we call it. Three hours a week online e-class or e-research session. We submit proposal to GMRT. These people sitting at home become co-investigator in the GMRT proposal. Out of that, whatever data we get, we publish in papers. And they become research scientists almost. Because without any research institute participation, the second line, a mechanical engineer, a oil engineer, a journalist, a school teacher, a unemployed youth, whatever you call it, they can all be authored because whatever they discover, 
that has gone into GMRT observation, they deserve credit for it. You may be a science student, you discover the 5,000 year old bone. You may be a housewife, you discover the 5,000 year old bone. If you can really discover, it doesn't matter what skill you ha had in your certificates. So other way around is, I'm a member of the Principal Scientific Advisors Consultative Group, kind of considered for that, that is giving thinking of new socio-scientific issues. And I gave, uh, I was invited in NIAS to give talk to the scientific administrator there. They also want to know wh what new ways we can address our scientific and social issues. I was awarded by ISER director, you can see, you can, he felicitated me when I had a one-day workshop there. Chief Minister of Borisa, and uh, uh, this is, I was given a Samantha Chandrasekhar Jyotirvigyani Samman along with the senior people. So this is not to just show that this is my identity, astronomical identity as well as the social identity. Why I am saying? Because this is considered good for the society by the social leaders. I am yet to become a social leader, right? I am too young. So that way, these people are, who are supporting me, they are going to help further so that you can participate in the program again in a more important way, more uh, significant way. So this is the model that we say that the flying pyramid model. I am sitting here, the director, industrialist, politician, whatever, whoever is supporting our initiative, the professional astronomer, collaborator, national or international, whoever is uh, making us publish, the Radar Home Discovery Camp Committee senior members of this collaboratory and e-astronomer seven day trained, RGB making i-astronomer one day trained. The knowledge is percolating, your discoveries are slowly growing up to make it a publication. They will help me in publication, they will help me in getting you trained. That way we can make this RGB making 1000 people, they can be actually even more 10,000, 50,000 people. Through this YouTube video that we will be uploading, they will be learning the same thing. But slowly the pyramid, which is heavy at the bottom and very slim at the top, only one person standing there, can in fact indeed fly by the power of the GMRT, by the power of the people. So many professional astronomers, this is not a research institute talk, I didn't go that. This is how we think a constellation each. Or an Everybody has tried to spot this part. Nebula. Nebula. Why? Because there is a fuzzy region that we have been told this is not a star but something else. What is that something else is we want to interested in understanding? Our extragalactic astronomy astronomy starts with the star but cannot stop at the star, right? There are lot many more things there. This is just nearby four light years away and we need to go till 13.6 billion years. Okay. Different color of star, different brightness. They may be intrinsically different brightness. They may be looking apparent brightness may be different because their distance is different. For example, not all the stars in this Orion are at the same distance. They are at a different distance. Okay. So this is optical observatory. As the Dhruvatara pole star going around that everything rotates, Earth is rotating, things go around that, it creates a track. If you observe for a couple of hours, you will see this kind of long tracks. The moment you say galaxy, this is a picture that the NASA gives you, Hubble Space Telescope gives you and you think, this is a galaxy. I ask you, apart from Andromeda, can you show me a galaxy picture taken by Indian telescope? See how struggling we are. If you don't take HST picture, hardly you have seen an optical picture of a galaxy taken by Indian telescope. Indian telescopes are not taking galaxy image, no, they are making. It's not reaching the public. It is not that significant that it is so powerful to reach the public. But from the, by the end of this talk, even yesterday you would have realized that the, we have a telescope, GMRT, which is world class and you should now be spreading images made with the GMRT. Elliptical galaxy. This galaxy you know, the optical galaxy, that there are blue regions, there are yellowish regions. The dust lanes people call it, very blue. These are the hot, higher surface temperature, lambda max t equal to constant. So the t is high, means it is blue. Red hot is 
less hot than blue hot. Okay, blue hot what probably doesn't exist. So when you heat an iron rod, radiating optical light in red band, and you leave it for a while, it doesn't radiate any longer in optical band. The peak of the emission shifts to infrared. That is how when you take your hand closer to that iron, you can still feel the heat from a distance. You don't have to touch because it is radiating in infrared. You can feel that the radiation is coming. If you heat that iron hot even more, iron rod, from yellow to it can become even blue like thing. Because that is what is the point that blue looking region are bright in blue, blue filter range because they are 10,000 degree, 20,000 degree, 30,000 degree hot. If they become so hot, the peak of the emission is go to infrared, sorry, go to ultraviolet. So galaxy telescope picture you have shown. If it is absorbed by that dust there, micron size dust, the red blue part will vary, it is getting absorbed or like sunset and sunrise, reddish region is only still visible. Okay, so this is young stars, this region will be mostly older stars, sun like star, the sun, uh, maximum radiation from sun comes around yellow green region. That's why we are more sensitive to yellow and green, probably that's how evolution has uh, uh, made us. This is an elliptical galaxy, there is no spiral arm, there is no color there also, there is no structure there. Why is that? Because all the stars in this system are of similar temperature, similar color, similar age. There is no over density somewhere of young stars. There is no smoothness anywhere else. So this is happening because this galaxy is not forming young stars recently. There is no 10, 10 million year, 20 million year, that kind of O and B type stars forming there. They all have been sun like several billions of years old. How? The galaxy has become like this. These are giant galaxies. The gravitational potential of this galaxy should be very heavy, very deep. So that should be attracting lot of gas, lot of galaxies towards them. They should be having lot of gas to form new and new stars. But they are not forming. The reason is still puzzling. We have hypothesis. Lot of people believe their explanation is probably correct, but we have not found evidence yet. So why that is happening? So the most popular hypothesis so far is this kind of spiral galaxies merge and become a giant big elliptical galaxy. Okay. So this kind of spiral galaxies merge and become a elliptical galaxy. So question now is when you look at the sky you get all kind of galaxies like a Haldiram Bhujia. You get all kind of thing there. Your job is to figure out what scientific process or topic you are interested in. So say for example this Hubble deep field picture we look at. There are galaxies which are looking blue and big. There are galaxies which are looking tiny dot, reddish and yellowish. They are very small and red. Now if you can measure their distance, this is a galaxy which is say for example 3 billion light years away. Light has taken 3 billion years to come from this galaxy to Earth. Go to this galaxy. Light has taken 5 billion years to reach from here to Earth. Light has taken 7 billion years from this galaxy to here. So now how the universe was 7 billion of years ago, you can pick up those 7 billion light years away galaxies. How the billion universe was 5 billion light years away. How the universe was 2 billion light years away, how the universe is today. There are all different evolutionary phases of our universe has been printed on a single now. Like you see yourself, you see your father, you see your father's father, everybody in the same photograph. Now you have to understand where did you come from, how you have become this kind of jeans pant cloth man, you need to understand the dhoti wearing father. Right. So, even before that you want to basically sort out those galaxies and see what are the physical properties of those long long back galaxies that have evolved to become this kind of a gentleman today. Correct? This is what is galaxy evolution study. Now we are starting them here, today. After roughly 14 billion years after the big bang, today's galaxy, they are mostly spiral or elliptical. Go little bit back. 
red seed 0.5, roughly like 9 billion years after the Big Bang. The galaxies were elliptical, spiral, okay, but little bit disturbances there, many, most of them. If you go a little bit 5 billion after the Big Bang, 2 billion after the Big Bang, why did the spiral galaxy, elliptical galaxy go? You won't find them. So most of the galaxies are not so clear that you can tell them either spiral or elliptical. They are in the formative era of their life. In some sense, they are yet to be defined what they will become. Today, everything is become either plant or animal, just for analogy. Long time back, you can see single cell thing. Single cell, plant or animal. Multiple cell, there are few organisms now that you cannot actually say they are plant or animal. So in that era, something has to be happening since billions of years that either they fall to this piggy bag or that piggy bag. Right, that pig money collecting bag. They become this category or that category. There are many more which are in the indecisive state in some sense. So to understand how the galaxies have been evolving, to understand how this group of galaxies have been evolving, to understand how black holes in them have been evolving, how the environment is affecting, how the black hole is affecting galaxies, these are the topic of black hole co galaxy coevolution. So how the monkey has become human, the biological evolution, how the amoeba has become a monkey, that's another kind of evolution, this is the evolution now. Black hole and galaxies of early days, how they were, how they have become like this today. This is for example another picture where the blue images are telling you the galaxies that were formed within 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang. How much is 500, 700? It's very small. How very small? Our galaxy takes 300 million years roughly to make a full circle. Here basically you can say two galactic year has not passed even. Just soon after that. How old is our sun? Four and a half billion years. So soon after half a billion year, how the, these galaxies, how they were structured, how they were star formation rate, how they were having a black hole or not, one can study. These are nearby galaxies you can see. But that's why you need large telescope to look at faint and far away thing. Okay. So <clears throat> this is a computer simulation. What you do, you apply, take a position x, y, z coordinate position, take a, assign a mass to that point, assign a width to that point, assign a gas density there and apply your Newton's law and let that galaxies grow. This is how you do a simulation. Like in experiment and theory, there are two branches of physics and other kind of sciences. Astronomy has roughly four branches of branches. Theory, pen, pencil work, paper work, brain thinking mostly. Second, numerical simulation. Third, you can do observation. We cannot bring a black hole and measure its weight. Fourth is this kind of simulation. There is one small branch is slowly picking up that is called experimental astrophysics, where you create the parameter space at a high temperature, high density, that kind of situation that is available in the pulsar, available in the sun, that kind of environment, and try to understand what is happening in that parameter space. So, in some sense, five branches of astrophysics you can call. This is again a simulation. This is famously known as millennium, simula millennium simulation. So you notice here, red shift, 18.3, very far away red shift, it means long, long back in the time. And in other way around, 0.2 giga year, 0.2 billion year, soon after the Big Bang. How the universe was looking like? This is 1 billion year after the Big Bang, point, roughly 5 billion after the Big Bang, today. Each pixel that you see there, each dot that you see there is a galaxy. Okay. So what you can understand from this picture, let me play it again. Soon after the Big Bang, next, next, next and today. So the contrast basically, it was a uniform and distributed kind of thing. The contrast is growing. You heard in the very previous lecture, the CMBR picture, double map picture, Kobe picture, etc. There is kind of a seed thrown in the ground. 
and from that seed like trees are growing. What is that tree? The trees are these clusters of galaxies. If you find a tree at this red shift, all cosmology will fail. So you cannot find a tree when you have actually put a seed everywhere. So there is, has to be some processor, there has to be the time that this almost uniform distribution of hydrogen gas has led to formation of clusters of galaxies which are thousand galaxies in it. A galaxy has 100 billion stars or Milky Way galaxy I think 100 billion stars are there. They are of different age, different formation time and of different temperature, mass etc. Et so gas has travelled from outskirts to the centres of these clusters of galaxies like we people families migrate na? from small village outskirts we migrate to big metro cities. And by the time you reach there, you lose your language you speak, the kind of cloth you wear and you are evolved here. So the environment has played a role in making the galaxies transform from isolated galaxies in nature to a galaxy at the centers of clusters. And that is the process, the galaxies merge, galaxies get stripped, the galaxies get affected from each other and they become elliptical galaxies, giant elliptical galaxies sitting at the centers of clusters. And those galaxies are called BCG, brightest cluster galaxy. Those are the centers where the first giant dark matter halos actually formed in the universe. And those dark matter halos, huge dark matter halos that formed first, soon after the CMBR picture that you can think of, they grow galaxies at their center. Everybody starts joining them. They become the central galaxy, keep on eating more or keep on adding more galaxies they become a giant elliptical galaxy. Interesting thing, if you mass of the spheroidal component of the bulge part of a galaxy, the central sphere part there and mass of the compact nuclear object or the supermassive black hole at the center. If you plot that, mass of the bulge part of the galaxy, big part of the galaxy, central part of the galaxy and mass of this innermost black hole at the center. They are correlated linearly. Somehow the big galaxy will have a big black hole and small galaxy will have a small black hole. How the galaxies are growing? Galaxies are growing by accreting more gas and forming new stars. So that's how they grow their mass. The black hole is also growing at the similar hand in hand way. The black hole is just accreting gas, they become an AGN, they give radiation, give this jet and they grow their mass. Another black hole comes in, they join, they grow their mass and spin. So how is this possible that they maintain a fixed ratio, fixed proportion? This is still a puzzle. Lot of merger are happening, lot of galaxies merge, different environment. Still, by the end of the day, everybody is behaving samely. So another thing that this kind of statistical nature are important to understand the significance of having a black hole galaxy evolution study. Another one, this is the theory. What is the plot? The luminosity function. For example, the number of galaxies in a luminosity or brightness range L plus L plus del L. L to L, L, L plus del L, that small luminosity range, how many galaxies are there? Here, the luminosity of the galaxy. Here, for example, low luminosity or faint galaxy. Here, high luminosity or bright big galaxies. And what you see, theory predicts that when you merge two small mass galaxies and make a big galaxy, keep making bigger galaxy by merging smaller galaxies, you end up having a large number of things in our universe and having less number of galaxies at the high mass. This is a prediction, theoretical prediction, that there will be large number of low mass galaxies like small, small dwarf galaxies, the very few amount of giant elliptical galaxies at the centers of clusters like thing. Fine. But when you observe there in the real sky, the, you get the blue curve there. There is always problem on this side as well as this side. Middle is only joking. So what it is saying, there is less number of dwarf galaxies, small galaxies, and there is not enough high mass galaxies forming, there is deficit there as well. 
Why? Somehow the giant galaxies of today are not forming star and they are not growing. I show you the elliptical galaxy picture. They are not forming star. They have stopped forming stars for last 5 billion years. So why they are not forming star? That is why there is a problem here. What did happen to these galaxies as well? So the hypothesis is, for this cosmological problem, the imaging thing, that probably at the lower end, small, small galaxies, dwarf galaxies, they have a lot of supernova explosion, and that supernova explosion throws away, kick away the gas in the dwarf galaxy. And unless there is enough gas, there is no stars are forming, unless stars form, there is no light, how can we see them? This probably explains part of the story. That because of this supernova explosion, the galaxies that we can actually detect them are less in number. They may be there as a gas cloud, but we don't see them. Okay, fine. What happened to this, this side there? The giant elliptical galaxies, why are they not forming star? The story is, there is a black hole here. There is an accretion disk and jet or wind outflows coming out. So in this radiation pressure, in the jet plasma outflow, the black hole is also kicking away cold gas in the galaxy, throwing it away, like vomiting. I don't want to eat more. So somehow, the giant black hole sitting at the giant elliptical center, they are also not allowing cold gas to settle down and form new star and become growing mass. So this is called AGN feedback or black hole feedback. So this is an important puzzle and we have a hypothesis to explain it. But we do not have a proper evidence for this process. Now whatever we have been observing with GMRT, the galaxies and their outflow from the black hole, can we use this thing to find a evidence for this? In some sense, can we find real evidence that this is happening? Smoking gun evidence. Another way of telling, the same thing. It's a bit complicated, but let me explain to you. Here actually, all the galaxies you see in a part of the sky has been plotted here. Here it is all the galaxies. Here is only early type or elliptical galaxies of the same sample. Here is only late type galaxies of the same sample. Here intermediate. So what is showing? <clears throat> here, the late type galaxies are confined here. Spiral galaxies. Blue looking star forming spiral galaxies are here. Elliptical galaxies are here. If you merge two spiral galaxies and form an elliptical galaxy, why there is no smooth flow from here to here? Somehow there is a clubbing here, there is a groupism here, and there is a long groupism here. This is called red sequence, this is called blue cloud. If galaxies simply merge and form an elliptical, this should be a smooth flow, smooth track. What do you notice here instead is there is a lack of density here, low density. Something happens that in the merger process of two blue spirals that they quickly become an elliptical. They don't continue to form star. That was is the, that has to be explained how that is happening. So blue cloud thing, galaxies, spiral galaxies merge and quickly become an elliptical and they leave for very short time here. How do you observe a short time phenomena? For example, you go to a station and try to look at that people are living for 60, 50 years, 80 years. How many women I can see who are pregnant? There will be very few. Either because of that they don't come to the station or because of the time period of the pregnancy that you can spot them is also very little compared to their lifetime. This is what is actually that they live very little time in this transient phase. That they quickly when they merge they become this. So can we spot few galaxies which are transforming in that intermediate phase, in, the, in their transformation phase, and we spot them how they actually change? <clears throat> That's it, the interacting galaxies. When the, during the interaction, a lot of star formation happens, a lot of ionized gas dust happens. This is another again a simulation from the same group, Millennium Simulation, Springer Little, that when two spiral galaxies merge, they form this kind of tidal tails, long tidal tail, they go far and lot of star formation happens at this center, lot of supernova wind, lot of stellar wind, they kick away, blow away gas from there. Now ultimately the two galaxies merge and become a remnant and very little is left there. 
because the wind and the supernova and the quasar wind, uh, radio galaxies, plasma outflow, everything is blown away there. So that's how when you merge two spiral star forming gas rich galaxy, which are looking blue, ultimately you end up having a remnant of the previous galaxy stars, billions of years old stars and no young star formation of O and B type few million years. This is the hypothesis. This is what computer simulation has found, not a real picture. We have to find a evidence that such thing is happening. How do you find an evidence that human become a baby and become grow old? You need to go to from space and the alien will come and look at, see I have seen this man is growing one inch every, day, every 10 year and probably this one feet baby grows to become a six feet tall old man. So he assumes the transformation. And he looks at every phase as a sample. So you have to find that kind of sample at this phase, this phase, this phase, this phase, this phase, and connect the pieces of the puzzle. So we have seen galaxies merging. We have seen galaxies almost merged. We have seen which has become a completely elliptical like galaxy. We have seen tiny evidence of the past merger. That kind of galaxy we have seen. So can we find a smoking gun? the culprit, our favorite black hole, has fired bullet and killed the future star formation in a merger remnant galaxy to make it an elliptical galaxy. How do you find smoking gun evidence? Bullet has been fired, the dead body you can find, gun he is having, but you have not seen the bullet going there. Right? So you need to find when did the person die, biologically you figure out. How old is the smoke that has gone up from this gun? You try to estimate the size of the smoke that has spread, figuring out this diffusion and the, what, what rate it spreads in the atmosphere, temperature of the room, etc., etc., you can consider. So can we find a smoking gun evidence or relic of the smoke in our case? Can we use GMR to find the old plasma outflow from the black hole system, which may be of the similar time scale that the galaxy has been fired to remove cold gas. If we find in 10, 15, 12 cases, this is actually happening, smoking gun is 5 minutes old and the person died 2 minutes back, okay, they are consistent, time scale. If the person died 5 hours ago and smoke is 2 minutes old, this is not. If it is 2 minutes and he has just now he has died, Maybe we don't know, we have to explain properly. So the time scale of this smoke that the plasma is with GMRT that we should find now should be matching with when did this galaxy stopped forming stars. So we have to age date the stars there. Okay, That's how we have to find a galaxy at the center and the plasma, diffuse plasma, relic of the smoking around the galaxy by looking at the TGSS low frequency images. We cannot find in optical, we can find in infrared if it is cold. We cannot find in American NVSS data, 1400 megahertz, but we can find in 150 megahertz long wavelength. Cold plasma, relativistic old synchrotron emitting plasma, will be still be visible in longer wavelength of GMRT. It will go missing in the NVSS band, but it will still be visible in the GMRT band. This is a lady, citizen scientist, who got famous for discovering optical relic of that kind of a outflow from a quasar outflow. So from that optical thing, nobody knows what this is. She becomes celebrity instantly because no astronomer had thought of such thing will exist. This is how this will look, that object looks. The explanation is there was a big galaxy here, a small galaxy passes by, it left a gas trail around it. And that time, after some time, the quasar, the black hole become active at the center, it gave lot of ionizing radiation, this got ionized. And then the black hole accretion quasar activity stopped. It's no longer giving radiation. But the gas was still ionized or hot, it is still cooling now. At that phase we have caught them. This is ionized, has not cooled, but this is not ionizing. It was ionizing some time back. So this galaxy, particular galaxy, some 20,000 years ago the quasar was active, the black hole was active. Now it is not. So optical people found some one more dozen such sources citizen scientists discovered. This is radio story. 
That was optical story. This is a radio story. In radio, this kind of plasma is can be 100 to 200 million year old. Not 10, 20,000, but 200 million year old it can be also. So we can go back in the history of the black hole activity even longer back in time. So we are at a good, good now uh, golden era that when the optical people are finding relic of the past activity of quasars, we can find similar past activity of black hole. We have a gold mine, our GMRT is low frequency, where old plasma can be seen better. We have a wonderful opportunity that the, all the sky has been looked at, 90% of the sky. In any part of the sky you look at, it has been imaged by GMRT in 150 megahertz, 2 meter wavelength. Can we spot galaxies which are in the, in this kind of a phase, yellowish looking phase, and there is a diffuse emission surrounding them. In this kind of RGB images, you can find an elliptical galaxy, no spiral arm, elliptical galaxy, and some diffuse emission there. It does not look like a it does not look like a one, some fuzzy emission side by it. This is the RGB image that you have already learned. NVSS, DGSS, and optical DSS red. So from this kind of thing, can we spot 150 people, 1000 people, 10,000 people in India, can we spot a diffuse emission surrounding the galaxies that can be a smoking gun evidence for AGN feedback or black hole feedback hypothesis that cosmologists need to explain the various correlation between galaxies, their environment, their property, etc. This is the sole scientific purpose of our Radiatom Citizen Science Collaboratory. How much time I have spoken? Roughly one hour. So I have to skip anything. Uh, I will not go to multi wavelength pictures of various galaxies to explain this thing. I will quickly go to a couple of examples only. Okay, I have told you that smoking gun evidence thing. This is one equation I will tell you. What we do at Chiranjeev Konard's paper, or my our collaborator there, that we are kind of aiming at black hole archaeology or smoking gun evidence for black hole doing this thing. So what do we do? We want to observe at what frequency, basically, TGSS is visible, NVSS it is not visible. The sensitivity is good, but the object has gone below the sensitivity. So can we find that kind of break frequency at what frequency the bending of the slope which is supposed to be straight has started. So once we know the bending frequency at what redshift the object is, we can assume what is the cosmic microwave background radiations, magnetic field, magnetic field of those region and then find out till when the black hole has stopped supplying plasma there. That way we can find the age of the relativistic plasma that is hanging around there as a diffuse smoke. If you can find that age, then with optical studies, we will find the age of the stars. Since how many millions of years, the galaxy is not forming star. So we want to find the age of the smoke, time scale of the smoke, and we want to find the time scale of the dead body. And we want to connect these two things. So this is the thing that I have said. For example, here the poster galaxy, it is you can see probably a tail like thing and a boxy like thing. It is not really elliptical galaxy. This is a remnant or product of merger of two spiral galaxies. So it is yet to settle down to elliptical thing. The blue looking is the young star forming region. And the red thing is the radio plasma that is coming out. Radio plasma that is coming out is only 2 million years old. And the stars they are forming in blue region, the stars are 300 million year old. And the galaxy merger time scale is 2 billion years, 1 to 2 billion years. So 1 to 2 billion years ago the galaxy merged, 300 years, million years ago the galaxy has been forming most of the stars. 3 million years ago the jet has come out and in next 
10 million years jet that has come out it has created a shock wave and the shock wave is x-ray hot actually it's going to hit the outer part where stars are forming if this hits in the next million 10 million year this will throw away the cold gas where stars are forming right so that way we can say that this galaxy has been caught in the act of killing future star formation for example like an explosion at the basement has happened it is powerful but the building has not collapsed yet it is still standing so this kind of right moment caught in the act this galaxy has been caught that's why it was in the news so basically here you can see the n2 line nitrogen line and the velocity from the center of the central object's velocity you can see here the ionized gas has been outlook and we seen like 7000 kilo, 700 kilometer coming towards us this is the cartoon actually two spiral galaxies merge the center part is rotating this way outer part is rotating this way the outflow wind outflow has happened jet has come out jet is creating this shock wave it is going to reach outer part and then after that this will be the future a smooth elliptical galaxy no cold gas to form star this this another one before this there was only one galaxy where the spiral the host galaxy was a spiral through lobe comes out plasma lobe come out there was only one galaxy known people doubted is really there or projects some kind of chance coincidence after we found this it was become clear GMRT image is in red and NVSS image is in blue we can see the central galaxy here in the inset also clearly a spiral one jet pair comes out almost two big blobs you can see the next picture you can see proper this is the host galaxy low and why is this so diffuse and irregular because imagine the smoking person it's a proper shape after five minutes it has diffused in all direction so there is no current supply of plasma from the center it has distorted blown away by the gas and diffusing in all direction so this is the old diffused plasma this is the current lobe from this radio galaxies plasma so if you can find that kind of thing from this galaxy old plasma new plasma so for suppose in, a, in your case, this galaxy doesn't exist, this radio loaf doesn't exist. You will spot only this and this. So that is our target. Can we find diffuse emission surrounding optical galaxies? So that became an amazing uh, uh, finding because the host of elliptical galaxies has to be a massive black hole and spinning black hole. In that process of merger, the spin 1, spin 2 of two spiral galaxies they must to become more massive and more fast spinning black hole. So this kind of fast spinning black holes are always found in giant ellipticals. Then only they have the bullet like powerful engine to create this kind of plasma lobes. So if you find a plasma lobe surrounding a spiral galaxy, that means the black hole is massive and spinning, but merger has not happened. Because if merger happens, it should be actually elliptical. So how without merger, the central black hole has been growing massive and fast rotating, that has been a puzzle. So that's how finding this has created an alternate route, proposing an alternate route to galaxy merger and black hole merger to create radio galaxies. So that is how it becomes very easy for everybody to understand what is this oddball galaxy, like you have found a, you have found a uh, plant which is working or you have found an animal which is of the other nature like it is having photosynthesis. So oddballs are important to make the theory that you have currently running more general. This is from our Subaru observation, uh, Japanese 8 meter telescope, that the galaxy, central galaxy is actually fast rotating, more than 350 km per second rotation speed. Very massive galaxy there. XMM Chandra observation also we have made. The center of the cluster is here. This is not the brightest cluster galaxy. Though it is the brightest, it is not the central galaxy. So it must be that the galaxy was actually outside and is slowly trying to join the cluster. It's a new entry. The another one with Joydeep Bakshi, we found this. Um, this was my speca and this was Joydeep Bakshi's object. Central galaxy, one pair of lobe, huge giant lobe you can see. You can see the spiral arm much better. Viresh Singh, another person, again, again Indian, he has also one more object. 
So total there are after my discovery, total six objects or objects are existing to make the theory of black hole evolution in the elliptical galaxy, that kind of thing more general. So this is as you know, this is our RGB images. You can make a Bakshi's object or my object speca. You can create this kind of images to find out or discover a speca-like galaxy. As simple as that, you find the lobe, you find the host galaxy. If it is spiral, it is discovery. As simple as that. But where is the problem? Problem is they are extremely rare. Million galaxies known, only six known like this. So how to solve this kind of issue? I give this typical example. Suppose I have lost my golden ring while playing football in the ground. If I go with a micro microscope or a magnifying glass, it will be very difficult for me. But suppose I am a school principal, headmistress or headmaster, whatever you call, and I have 100 students in my class. Role number one, look for here. Role number two, role number three, role number five, I distribute the class. And I need to only tell them that find something which is circular, find something which is yellow, find something which is shining. They don't need to know atomic weight, molecular weight, atomic number of gold. That I know. If they are interested, they can learn from me later. That is the purpose, that is the method that can we distribute the TGSS survey data files to large number of people who can spot such kind of sources and will be able to publish making the job simpler. That's how we have large number of people, right? That's a human resource. This is how we start, that we look at UV optical IR to understand the basic of galaxy. Then you look at the radio galaxy and basis TGSS ROR, as simple as you have learned through the Questro contest. Now being part of this kind of Vigyan Samagam, huge mega, mega projects, can we think of in future winning a Nobel Prize? Why not? We are part of the best facilities that will be happening. So if you lead scientifically with your brain power, with your analysis power or whatever instrument power, you should be able to win. At least like LIGO, we should be part of the projects that will get Nobel Prize. Yes, it should be possible. Forget about this part. This is an interesting book actually, if anybody is interested can read, Reinventing Discovery. This is what the citizen science describes actually also. So these are various citizen science programs. This we have already described that where is the Indian connection to this picture. Uh, that is where Questro is. This is another picture that I should say. That this is the plot from Wikipedia of course. Then this is the size of the telescope and the year that where the telescope started functioning. There are dozen 8 meter, 10 meter class telescope. But our Indian telescope does not appear anywhere here because we have small. Only recently we have started 3.6 meter telescope. That is why we are part of 30 meter telescope now. That we have to be part of biggest telescope to be able to the, do the cutting edge science there. Here you already know that we are already having a largest sensitivity frequency range telescope, world class telescope. So we should be able to do good science there. That is an even bigger thing that is coming, low uh, SCA, we are part of there as well. from Nisim's plot, just one slide actually, that until the actually, until the scar comes in. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I got an emergency phone call, I need to move now, can I just? Go. So until the scar comes in, we are in our frequency range is still the most sensitive telescope. So whatever you discover, when we follow up with GMRT, we'll be having the best data on that object. There's no doubt with that. All the foreigners are coming to use it, we should be improving our science out of it. We are doing well, but we have to do even better. Like a dozen nature paper, nature science paper has been published, why six of them are not from Indian leaders. And let me show this picture. This is the picture that you created, right? You people created TGSS, NVSS and DSS, RGB picture. The same galaxy, when I look at with GMRT, this will be the picture. See the sensitivity and resolution, how better it is. If this is showing tip of the iceberg, almost like full iceberg you can see here. That is the power. Here, TGSS has looked at that part of the sky for only few minutes. Here, I will be looking at for several hours. That's how the sensitivity has improved. 
So many objects basically are discovered by the citizen scientist and we follow up with GMRT, we discover new things there. This is looking like some fuzzy curve thing. When you look at with GMRT, we found actually two episodes, one pair of lobe, another relic lobe surrounding that. Again, again uh, here, the galaxy which is moving this way and the older plasma can be seen here. Another one, you can say, is a mechanical engineer. The galaxy is here, the dead lobe can be seen distorted. After the smoke, smoker has finished the job for after five minutes, you don't know which way he was sitting, which way he was standing, which way he was blowing. Then the one, it's probably jet set, probably merger of black hole or something that we are not very sure. So you can become a co-author in that kind of a paper. Roughly 20 students out of the 150 that I have trained are doing PhD abroad in astrophysics. That way it is helping their career to grow. So this, her, his object, her object you saw previously. Many students in different countries that you can see, 20 as I said. People are actually supporting me. Govind Swarup, father of Indian radio astronomy, he has been supporting from the very beginning. He writes me continuously whenever there is a progress. Students, he wants to interact, he and, uh, encourages them. This is my PhD guide. He's head of the uh, distance education, online education program for Ayuka. What he talks about right at home, let me say, to few more readers, I will read their statements. Developing scientific temper, humanism, and the spirit of inquiry and reform are enshrined in the constitution of India. And citizen science projects are an important component in working towards that goal. Red at Home is a significant citizen science project which has touched many part of the country and enthused young students to take up scientific project in astronomy. It has also helped expose them to one of the most powerful radio telescopes, the giant meter of radio telescope built and operated by NCRT AFR. I wish Red at Home all the success. Founding director of ICTS TFR Bangalore. It is a platform for new initiative, ICTS is. For example, you are here, the Red at Home Discovery Camp. I think this Red at Home Collaboratory is a new initiative, a new initiative of so many people to be looking at the astronomical data and leading to some science out of it. So, we are providing the platform, wonderful thing. He was the uh, director of acting director of uh, Bangalore. Now somebody else is there. India has a large number of students and even office workers who are excited about space and astronomy, but have no, but have had no opportunity to pursue their passion. Many people are there. Groups such as Red at Home provide such opportunities using publicly available archive data archived from worldwide astronomical community. So your passion can be connected through internet to do some work. He is known for his uh, gravitational wave finding in, uh, discovery in Indian leadership. Starting in 2000, sorry, it's a bit personal. Starting in 2013 and mentored solely by your personal passion and vision, Red at Home has grown into a successful citizen science initiative in India today. It has offered intellectually hungry undergraduate and graduate students and amateurs an opportunity to do research and contribute to exciting discoveries in astronomy. It mines the excellent data of GMRT and spreads the message of how science works to a larger population in the country. I hope your report will serve as a model for other branches of astronomy and science. Wishing you all the best. Keep up the exciting work. Balaya. So, these leaders, when they are appreciating, they have seen how science has been changing. They have seen how society participates and organizations grow. They have a feeling now that this is a good thing that can change many things. So that's why I will close with this slide only that uh, looking forward to your participation in citizen science research, join the Facebook group, be connected with me. Big data problem like big telescope like JMRT and SCA in future, TMT in future, big data problem can become a big prospect through mega projects and citizen science research. Because the data is huge, we are large number of people. If you can involve them, they can solve many problems, like the football gold ring example I gave. Research and development at home is possible. It's our social scientific responsibility to do, involve many people also. Not just do science alone, but involve many people in getting that benefit. One CSR is citizen science research. The other CSR is more popular. 
there is corporate social responsibility. Our government has now decided that companies can spend their money for basic science research. Isn't it possible that we can use the company's CSR money for supporting citizen science research? That is what I am slowly now pushing forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda, for your last two, over the last two days, you have uh, actually uh, presented this course through project to the audience and also yeah, demonstrated to this uh, how powerful is this science, citizen science research program is. And I think you should take lessons from this. And uh, unfortunately, the audience is very thin. And this is not a very good advertisement for this city. This city is a science-loving science city. city. I yes, know exactly. Novel city. <laughs> yes, we worked so hard for the last over the last two days, but unfortunately, many actually interested people missed it. Maybe it is our fault, I think. Mm -hmm. exactly. But I have a pleasant, pleasant duty to perform. Mm -hmm. This is a small token of appreciation. Thank you from the organizers. Thank you.
Uh, minus 130 Kelvin dollar boost. 130 Kelvin. So object that is radiating in 22 micron is 130 Kelvin hot. How much is 130 Kelvin? Minus 140. 130. It is hotter than you or colder than you? Very cold. So can it be a star? No. Of course not. No. There is a point that when you go from ultraviolet optical to 22 micron infrared. You no longer see stars in the sky. You are actually seeing frozen cold stuff, which is which are asteroid, comet like things. It can be cold molecular gas cloud. Temperature is so low that atoms in that 150 degree centigrade and higher than so small, they just stick to each other and they become solidified. Molecular gas cloud or frozen stuff. On a solid surface, they can stick. That is what comets are. They collect the gases from the surrounding region. The nickel core is already very cold, so that nitrogen gas, whatever gas is there, they are stick to the surface. When they come close to solar system, it's low. That's how the tail has come up. So that way, uh, the temperature, color, filter, wavelengths are mapped by simply lambda max t equal to constant. So beyond the stars. You can go to X-ray, mm-hmm. and you can see again. Why don't you see crab? How it looks in X-ray? Crabbing X-ray. So that way again, you won't see a star. This side, long wavelength, you won't see a star. Stars are only in the middle. That far extreme ultraviolet in X-ray, you won't see a star again. See in the crab. Forget about that part now. That is technical. So you should be able to say what is the blue region, what is the green region, what is the red region. What is red? But what does it mean? What does the white and the blue region mean? Where can you say? Your picture. Show me your picture. Okay. What is the red element? What is the difference between the red looking region and green looking region? What is the data in, in red? 